the star of the week. Uh, congratulations, Johnny. Thank uh, you very much. Hoping this is turning out to be successful. I hope. Please. Could you uh, show me around? Sure, yeah. I would. This is the newest painting in the collection. It comes from a kind of a visionary process. It begins as abstract expressionism, which is pure color and emotion and form, and more like a dance of color. And then I begin to see things in it, which I bring out. And it's called uh, One Night Long Ago in Barbados. It, it looks like a Caribbean colony to me. Um, Figures of um, white plantation owners, fire at night, um, black slaves. This is Charles Mingus in Mexico. They had rented a house in Cuernavaca near Mexico City. And uh, he was sitting in the wheelchair. He was a big man, loved to eat, and big anyway. But the disease had swollen him up even more so. And there was just something tragic and funny about this moment, you know. The colors are exaggerated and changed a bit for the sake of painting. This was one of the first of uh, the series of abstract work. The bulk of my work in L.A. belongs to this period, but this was one of the early ones. I think I learned more about painting, painting this way, than I ever thought I would. I had a prejudice against abstract painting, the process is absolutely thrilling. Yeah. And, and more oddly enough, in league with nature than, than painting natural realism, you know, because the paint kind of grows on the canvas, you know, you, you see how, how land erodes, how leaf veins and plants and flesh are formed by applying the paint thickly and rolling it with I use rolling pins, glass bottles, anything, you know. But I like working this way very much. <clears throat> this is sad, yeah, this yeah. is... There were times, you know, when I was working with him that I could see his fear profoundly. One such instance, we went to a bullfight in Mexico City, mm -hmm. and Charles was a Taurus, so when the bull came into the arena, as soon as he saw it come in, he began to cry, you know, the bull was going to die. He identified so strongly with it, the bull is going to die, you know. And I tried to capture, this time, this is from memory, not from photographs, how he looked at that moment, you know, confronted with... This is L.A. at night, you know, the sprawling, the lights in the valleys over the hills and the, the smoggy sunsets. and. Um, it's called axillar moonrise. Axillar is the underarm of a bird's wing. Uh-huh. You no, know, this part of a bird's wing. So this is... Yeah. And these are the figures of friends of mine, another painter, Boyd Elder, and Jaco Pistorius. Mm. It's Christmas, coming Christmas time. It's a personal diary, you know, yeah. of several days and conversations between friends. That's the latest one. Mm -hmm. This is later work again, as the paint begins to get thicker. Um, actually, it's kind of between two periods. Um, it's a portrait of my husband, um, Dalhousie Castle in Scotland. We had a beautiful room there in an old pink castle with a lot of walking yards with sheep grazing on green lawns and a little river running through the property. Thick walls, a wonderful library. 
was spring and every day they put fresh flowers in our room. The room was very, very quiet, but it was loud with the smell of flowers and ghosts of time, you know, so uh, I tried to put that energy uh, those, back those in. Those are the smells in, in the air. Smells and, and feelings and... Ghosts. Uh, it's called Still Life with Commotion. And there's, a, there's the big, big one over there, Masterpiece. This is uh, from this, this year, right? This was from three years ago. This was originally to be the cover of the Dog Eat Dog album. That's right, yeah. And it was requested by David Geffen, who doesn't manipulate me or dictate to me, really, but... He said, oh, Joan, you know, we know you're arty, he said. <laughs> he said, but what we need is your, your face on the cover. Oh. So I did, that one, I put yeah. my face on it, but it's hardly recognizable, <laughs> is it? <laughs> to please him, you know, I made that one. This is called Marriage of Church and State. Um, we've come through a period in America where the church and uh, the television evangelists were very chummy with Ronald Reagan. And uh, blessedly, the scandals yeah. have opened up and we have some relief. But before they did, this piece was painted as a kind of a awesome. personal protest, you know. You and the news is that uh, the priest is back in the power again, huh? I mean, Which one? Jimmy the, the... Swaggart? Yeah. He is? Yeah. Oh, that slick devil. He's a slick devil, you know. Mm. Yeah. I read in the paper today, as a matter of fact. Uh huh. Yeah. What about the couple? The. the I don't the, know. Oh, but Jimmy's back in power. Yeah. That's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> you know who he is? Jerry Lee Lewis's cousin. Oh yes. That's I why didn't know he, it. Yeah, he's so mad at rock and roll. He's always been jealous of his ki cousin. He was a child evangelist. And Jerry Lee Lewis was a child rock and roll star. See? Yeah. So they had this childhood rivalry between Antagonism, them. huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so no wonder he hates rock and roll, you know. <laughs> rock and roll is the devil. <laughs> Johnny, you uh, get inspired from uh, painting a lot, from the uh, paint. When I say painting, it's the form of art. That's, uh, pictures, visual things. I, I, um, I like it. In, it balances out the, the writing of poetry to me mm. and the music. Sometimes I pick up an instrument and I feel I'm repeating myself. I haven't had really any growth. You know, I, First of all, I'm compulsively creative. I enjoy the creative process. Mm -hmm. but, um, if one, if no inspiration is coming into one, then I switch to another. Poetry, the writing of poetry requires that you go inside yourself and um, examine your thought. Maybe you feed yourself an idea. Maybe something happened, you want to think about it. So the mind is full of chaotic, overlapping thoughts, you know, mm -hmm. the opposite of Zen, you know. It's uh -huh. like you have to go into chaos in a way for, for the poetry. As a result, it isn't something that you want to do all the time, I don't think. That much mental activity needs to be balanced out with something. So the painting, especially the abstract painting, helps me to clear my head out. When I paint abstractly, I can get it down like meditation to just electrical impulses and synapses and hardly any language. And it's very um, soothing. In other words, you use a different part of brain uh, yeah. for the painting or? Yeah. It seems to be, yeah. Tell us about the latest one. How uh, This is the first uh, album in three years, almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I've listened to songs. Uh, some of them are very visual, like you said. What about uh, the one with uh, Peter Gabriel? Uh, OK, that, yeah. that's, that was the first song on the record, and that was the first one yeah. recorded, also. Um, my husband was working in the southwest of England, producing Ben Orr. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came to visit, went to the art supply store, picked up some paints so I had an activity to keep out of the boy's hair, you know. And just at that time, Peter Gabriel finished his album, so, so yeah. and he did it in his own studio, which was 40 miles 
away, also in the southwest of, of England. And Peter said, well, my studio is now standing empty. Why don't you record them here? Well, because of the isolated nature of the studio, from time to time, Peter came around to see if I needed coffee or, you know, something. And so I said, why don't you sing on this? So he sang the whole song all the way through. Yeah. And then I found places in the vocal and wove us in and out, you know, so that it keeps metamorphosizing from his voice to mine. Not like a duet, girl sings to boy, boy sings back to girl, but where it was to represent the inner, you know, when, when you first fall in love, um, sometimes you'll say the same thing at the same time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And there seems to be a mental alertness um, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I wanted the vocal to depict that. Yeah. Then we, we finished most of it in that studio. Uh -huh. But later in LA, I added extra keyboard parts, different background ideas came to me a bit at a time, like, you know, a little line here. Mm -hmm. Stand back, listen, you know. Oh, what if we put a right there, you know? Mm -hmm. Not unlike painting. My Secret Place, Johnny Mitchell. What are some of the things in life you're interested in um, besides uh, creating? Uh... In life? Well, the business of living day to day, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, dialogue with people. Yeah. Improving communication, trying to understand people better, try, you know, always trying to understand myself better. Communication. I think mainly I'm interested in communication. All the arts are just a manifestation of mm. that. 